Hey Rebel Riser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy and thank you so much for joining me for it. And thank you especially to the people who make this possible for you with their support at patreon.com slash SW7x7. Alright, this is another deep dive episode related to Teach Corrupt, which is episode 6 of The Acolyte, and we're getting into some kind of adult territory, <laughs> if you will. Uh, at the top, I mentioned that Ryan Johnson once said that there was a certain scene in The Last Jedi that might be the closest we ever get to a sex scene in Star Wars. That is the scene where, from across the galaxy, Rey and Kylo Ren are communicating with each other, and there's a moment where they appear to be able to touch each other's hands, his fingers touching just barely before Luke busts in and realizes that this communication situation is going on. But now we have the Chimer Osha dynamic happening, and yeah, it's basically rivaling what happened with Rey and Kylo Ren in The Last Jedi. Now, it didn't necessarily appear like it was happening like that. Yes, even in the beginning of the episode, when Osha is following Chimer and Chimer undresses to take a bath in that pool of water, right? There wasn't necessarily anything seductive about it, if you will. In fact, it was kind of an interesting reversal of sorts, right? Like, in the previous episode, we saw Chimere absolutely unleashed and murdering Jedi after Jedi after Jedi. On the opposite side of the spectrum here, at the beginning of this episode, we see him at what ought to be his most vulnerable. And you know for a fact that he's aware <laughs> that Osha is following him the whole time. It's not just a moment where he kind of like looks around and is like, oh yeah, you know, she's over there and has a lightsaber. I think it's more like, sensing she picked up the lightsaber in that moment. But you know he knows that she was watching the whole time, and yet he allowed himself to be vulnerable in front of her. And there's a little bit of cheekiness, if you will, when he says to her, well, if you're not going to join me, then at least let me put my clothes back on, right, before he comes out of the water. And that's not necessarily meant to be directly seductive, but he's certainly opening up the door to that possibility. And the fact that he just walks right by her, gets dressed, and she's got that lightsaber trained on him, it really kind of demonstrates that even though he is in what appears to be a very vulnerable position that he's also retaining, at least for himself and his own eyes, a tremendous sense of control over the situation. He's utterly unafraid of her, and that's probably a f consequence of two factors. Number one, the fact that he's fully aware that Osha will not want to strike someone down who is unarmed and not posing a threat and also the fact that her anger is betraying her thoughts at some level. And so, yeah, there is definitely a level of confidence in Chimere's attitude toward this thing that belies the vulnerability. But even though it doesn't look like we're in the territory of outright seduction at this point, I gotta say, <laughs> the script that they gave to Nicole Zanzarella for the audio description of the episode definitely is already all about that, and it's very strongly leaning in that direction. When it talks about Chimere, it talks about him undressing and revealing his well-toned back. Yes, that's the phrase that we have. And then the sunlight falling on his taut muscles as he's going into the pool. The language of that script is already laying the groundwork for what's to come. Then back when they're in the cave, the conversation they have about force powers fading and Chimere is saying, yeah, there's other ways to access it, and he says anger and fear and loss. The audio description script points out that he turns to look at Osha, and that's when he delivers the word desire. But he's not necessarily being like that directly overt. He's playing to the full range of her emotions when he says, you know, why would you only love people who can go so far? Why wouldn't you be with someone who can go as deep as you can? He's appealing to a full range of emotion here. And Osha's response is almost kind of like Luke Skywalker's in The Empire Strikes Back when he says to Vader, I'll never join you. And she stalks out. And so Chimer follows and says, aren't you forgetting something? You're here to kill me, or at least you've been wanting to kill me. So he basically 
puts it you know as close to the test as possible utterly and completely daring her to do it going so far as to take her hand holding the saber and put it up against him grabbing her arm to hold it there and again you get the vibe that despite how vulnerable he is in this moment that somehow he is also fully in control of this moment too and when she finally snaps at him and turns on the lightsaber and shoves him against the rock, they have conversation about, you know, the failure and losing everything. And when you lose everything, you're free. The audio description <laughs> talks about how she's pressed up against him and meets his sympathetic gaze. And it even goes so far as to say at one point that she's still holding the red bladed lightsaber throbbing in front of his throat. She's described as gazing deeply into his eyes, having a conflicted expression. And finally, when they're back in the cave and he offers her the opportunity to try on the helmet, she says, I don't trust you. He says, nor should you, but you should learn to trust yourself. And then the audio description says that he gives her a lingering stare before heading off. And on top of that, when asked what it is that he wants, his reply is the power of two. Now, what exactly he means by that is hard to say, whether he's looking for some kind of relationship that goes beyond master and pupil, or whether he's looking for the Sith ideal that follows the rule of two, or whether he's actually thinking about a dyad kind of thing, or some combination thereof. Ultimately, the tension between these two characters goes well beyond anything that we saw with Rey and Kylo in The Last Jedi. Now, I will say, and I have said over the course of the podcast for many years, that I do think romance is a key part of Star Wars' enduring success over time. But it is kind of funny how we keep seeming to get situations where somebody kills a lot of people and that seems to be a prelude to attraction, right? Like Rey still being interested in Kylo Ren, but from the perspective of not only being attracted to him, but also believing that he can be turned to the good side. Or you have Anakin and Padme, where Padme definitely had an attraction, but even in the face of Anakin saying that he slaughtered all of the Tusken Raiders, that she was still kind of okay with the way things went. And now we have Kymir and Osha, and whereas Osha definitely has a problem with what Kymir did, she's also kind of shaky in her own particular moral foundation situation where she may end up getting drawn to the dark side. But even though I do think that romance is really a key part of Star Wars, I do want to say also that it's really cool that Vernestra Rowe is the one character from High Republic storytelling that has made it into the Acolyte series for a lot of reasons, but also particularly because the character is asexual and aromantic, and it is good to see that representation happen in live-action Star Wars storytelling. And so that's what I've got for you on today's episode of the podcast and the idea that perhaps episode six of The Acolyte is possibly the steamiest Star Wars we've ever gotten. And that's going to do it for this episode of the show. If you enjoy it, I hope you'll consider helping me get it out to more and more people. And you can do that by letting algorithms know with your likes and your follows and your comments and all that good stuff. You can do that by just telling people that this is out there for them. And you can even help me continue to produce this dose of Star Wars joy as an independent creator and you can learn more about that at patreon.com slash sw7x7 and it just remains for me to say thank you so much for joining me for this episode as always and may the force be with you wherever in the world you may be by seven is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox, and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited, other respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyrighted by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.